the system didn't work. I think that's the best way to say it. The system failed. Tina was in a, an awful lot of discomfort. Um, it, it developed over the years, getting worse and worse. And we kept going back to the hospitals saying, what's going on, what's going on? And we kept getting told, there's nothing there. We can't find anything. A doctor came around and spoke to Tina when she was on her own and said, Tina, we've got some bad news. We found a mass. And with that, she rang me in tears and I just left, left work as it was and straight to the hospital and to, to comfort her, because all you can do. You know, you've just been told that they found a mass, and when we found out how big it was, it was scary. She had five days a week radiotherapy for five weeks and chemotherapy one day a week for four weeks. Our life together changed. Tina was not distant, but withdrawn, because You've just been told you've got cancer. She went to a hospital in London to have a treatment called brachytherapy. And that went fairly well. I went to hospital every, every night to see her up in London. We were told it was beatable. And we battled it together. Then got to the July or the June and we're told another scan and said it was a, a dead mass. And we thought, yes. And we got to tell our friends, champagne moment. It's a dead mass. We've beaten it. Got to end of July and the pain started coming back. And our optimism started to sink. And she had another PET scan on August 31st, 2014. Our first wedding anniversary. And we were told... It's come back and you've had all the radiotherapy you can have. You can't have any more. All we can do now is care for you. And at that stage, your whole life disappears in front of you. So we wrote, we sat down and wrote a list of things we want to do, places we want to go to. The pain was getting worse and worse and our list was getting shorter and shorter because we ran out of time and October she was taken into Sobel House to try and get the pain under control and she never came out she never came back home you could see she was getting weaker and weaker and I'm, I'm sat on the bed I've got my arms around her and she looked up opened her eyes her eyes looked up once rolled over and she was gone and that's, it's, it's that opening her eyes and looking at me. And that was the last thing she saw was my face. And I had to make two or three very difficult phone calls that evening. I don't know how I felt really looking back at it. I was, I was going to work and doing the, the basics and coming home and doing the basics. You had these nights just sat at home thinking and thinking and thinking, this shouldn't have happened. This should not have happened. Something went wrong. A mass that size doesn't grow overnight. How was it missed? Why was it missed? I saw how Tina's parents were, how distraught they were, devastated. You know, having lost a daughter at 47 is just shocking. You should never, never bury your children, is the saying. And Tina's mum and dad, uh, they're heartbroken. Both hospital trusts admitted liability for their mistakes and um, hopefully they've put procedures in place that these mistakes don't happen again. If, so, if somebody's in, in a similar situation, having lost a loved one through negligence, I would say speak to Seal Medi Law because the support they gave me was outstanding. The help, the advice, all the way through. I'm sure the team knew when I was at a low point and I'd get a phone call 
is everything okay? You know, do you want to take a bit of time? They were, they were patient with me. They helped me all the way through. Like I say, there's not a day goes past. I mean, she looks down on us all the time, smiling. That was Paris in our honeymoon. You know, at the end of the day, this is people's lives. Yeah, it's not just a, a cut hand or a broken finger. This is people's lives. People say that when someone passes on, it gets easier. It doesn't. It gets different. Life gets different. 